Hey there, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, and this is your pretty Kenmore. Uh, and this is the final test before we pack her up to ship her out to you. And um, in this test, we're going to go over the various controls, uh, how to wind the bobbin, how to uh, thread the machine. And, uh, chances are you're uh, already very familiar with this machine, but just in case uh, you are not, or uh, if you'd like a little refresher, um, that information will be here in this video. And uh, also, uh, we'll post this video to YouTube uh, for the benefit of other owners that uh, uh, have this machine but uh, are not familiar with its operation. So, let's get started. Start by winding a bobbin, and of course you'll find your bobbin case below the slide plate, which in this case pops up, and pulls off instead of sliding. There's a little latch on the side, get a hold of the latch, spring loaded. And just pull your bobbin right on out. If the uh, thread stuck under the presser foot, then lift the presser foot. If it doesn't want to come out, check and make sure that your needle is not down in the bobbin case at the moment. So as long as you're holding this latch, uh, your bobbin's not going to drop out, which makes it pretty convenient for putting in and out. But let go of the latch, and the bobbin will drop out in your hand. And let's uh, take this old thread off. Uh, I'm a firm believer in not winding thread over old thread on your bobbin. Just takes a minute to pull it all off. And nobody, nobody, nobody ever uses that thread that was left on the bobbin. Just doesn't happen. Here's your bobbin. Here's your bobbin winder. Uh, you put your thread on the spool pin. And you go around this tension device uh, from the front towards the back, all the way around almost like a half a figure eight. So the thread crosses over itself and then on back to the bobbin winder. Before I put the bobbin on, I always put a few wraps of thread on the bobbin just to hold the thread in place while it winds. Then with your thread going on over the bobbin in this direction, clockwise, oops, I don't put it on the other spool pin. I push the lever forward so the uh, so it goes into the bobbin. And as your bobbin winds and uh, fills up, it's going to push this lever out until when the bobbin's full, it just pops out and stops winding, which is pretty cool and convenient. Uh, Declutch your machine by turning the knob in the center of the hand wheel uh, towards you about an eighth of a turn or so until you feel it hit its stop. And then the, the hand wheel is free to spin and wind your bobbin and the rest of the machine doesn't cycle. So here we go. No reason to go real fast. Okay, that should be plenty enough for our test. Oops. Flip this lever out, recut your machine by tightening the knob. Uh, and with your thread coming off the top of the bobbin in this direction, Drop your bobbin into the bobbin case and guide the thread up through this little slanted slot at the bottom, up and under the leaf spring until you feel it click into place there. Then you'll feel just the slightest amount of drag on your thread and that's your lower tension. That's what this leaf spring is. That little screw is where you Change the lower tension if, if you ever need to. It's not something you usually have to do. 
Most of the tension adjusting is done up here on the upper tension. But sometimes, you know, if you're uh, sewing something that uses a, a different thickness of thread, um, you may need to adjust it just a tiny bit up or down. Uh, with this little finger on top pointing up, push the bottom case onto the spindle in the center of your hook, and you'll feel it click into place. Drop your thread down there out of the way, and then you can put your slide plate that doesn't slide back on. Uh, to thread the machine, uh, from your spool pin, go into the curly thread guide on the back, thread guide on the front, and down between the toes, I mean between the discs of the tension assembly. Come all the way around and catch this little leaf spring and pull up until your thread goes into the notch at the top here. From there, go into the thread guide, into your take up lever from right to left, down into the next thread guide right here, onto the thread guide here, and into the thread guide on your needle clamp. I always cut a fresh end on my thread. And I'm just being dramatic here because I just cut a fresh end on it a minute ago when I cut it off with a bobbin winder. Anyway, it makes it a lot easier to poke through the hole. A lot easier than uh, licking and twirling and all the other things that people do. Hold your thread loosely, turn the hand wheel towards you one full revolution, and your needle will take the thread down where the hook will pick it up and wrap it around the bobbin and bring up your lower thread. See, there's your lower thread. Go between the toes of the presser foot and towards the back. Some people say go to the left, some people go to the, say to the back, say go to the back. Uh, I don't think it really matters a whole lot. As you can see, I've already been testing this machine. Lower your pressure foot onto the fabric, using the lever in the back here. And these are your controls. This is your stitch length lever. From the zero mark here, going down, your stitch length gets longer and longer and longer until at the bottom are your longest stitches. From the zero going up, your stitches get longer and longer and longer, except in reverse. This dial in the middle here is so you can set your stitch length. And also, when you set your stitch length, uh, your stitches in reverse are going to be exactly the same length as your stitches in forward. This is your stitch width, how far it's going to zig and zag. And uh, zero is straight stitch. Oh, that's not zero, that's R. Zero is straight stitch. Uh, when you're on zero, that's a zero zig or zag, so you're going in a straight line, making a nice straight stitch. If you go up, of course, up from zero to four, uh, your width gets wider and wider and wider until five is your widest stitch. I'm going to go back to zero because we're going to start with a straight stitch. This is your feed drop. This drops the teeth of the feed dogs that move the fabric so that they never come up high enough to touch your fabric. And you want that when you're doing uh, any kind of free motion sewing, like uh, darning or embroidery or applique, or if you're just drawing pictures, you can do that. When you do that, you want to let all the pressure off of your sewing foot by pressing down on this little collar here. And now uh, you're in control and you can move your fabric around. Of course, you probably want to put it in a, uh, an embroidery hoop to keep the fabric taut while you're drawing. 
Um, for regular sewing, you're going to want to push down about halfway on your uh, uh, sewing foot pressure adjuster. Halfway is good for a medium fabric. Um, if you're sewing something heavy, you may need a little more pressure, so you push it down a little bit more. If you're sewing something delicate, you might want to back off your pressure a little bit. But for regular sewing, we're going to go about halfway. This is your upper thread tension. Uh, when I restore a machine, I usually set it so that the, uh, the correct uh, tension for regular fabric is right around three. Uh, again, if you're sewing something heavy or light, you may need to adjust up or down a little bit, but that's a sewing thing. This is your light switch over here. This is where your stitch pattern cams go. On this machine, as with a lot of machines, uh, you'll want your uh, zigzag pattern cam in there uh, to make your zigzag. Otherwise, you're always going to straight stitch. So, without further ado, uh, my mama used to say hold the threads when you uh, start your seam. So, I do that until the first uh, lock stitch. And let's see. Let's put our feed back in the up position so it moves the fabric. Uh, I'm going to set our stitch length at about two. I think that that's two millimeters. I'm not sure. Uh, Singer gauges um, are uh, marked in stitches per inch, but I think that this one is millimeters. Not positive about that, but okay. So here we go. What a nice smooth machine. Oh, that's a nice balanced stitch, front and back. Let's go with a longer stitch. And of course, you'll see the fabric move faster with the longer stitches. Reverse. Forward, reverse, forward. Okay, uh, now let's do a zigzag. I'm just going to turn it all the way up from zero to four. We'll do the widest zigzag. And if you want to do a satin stitch with her, where your zigzag stitches are really close together and it makes it look like a thick line. Uh, you'll want to use a different foot. You'll want to use the uh, take this one in this kit. Uh, you'll want to use the satin stitch foot, which has a cutout on the bottom. satin stitch foot looks just like the zigzag foot except that on the bottom it's got this little channel so as the thread humps up when you're sewing a really close uh, zigzag stitch which is called a uh, satin stitch uh, as the thread humps up it doesn't get stuck under the pressure foot like it'll do with the uh, regular it's got room for it to uh, slide over that um, but let's do that. Let's do a little closer zigzag. Again, nice looking stitch top and bottom. Um, let's do a different stitch pattern. Uh, when you insert your pattern cam, pull the door all the way open uh, because when you pull it all the way open, it moves the uh, cam followers out of the way so that your disc can go 
all the way down. And then, okay, uh, let me set the, uh, let's set the stitch length at about two, stitch width at four. Again, we're using the double-sided pattern cam, which uh, uh, does forward and reverse together. See the fabric back up every now and then. And it accomplishes a pretty pattern. Um, this is your um, uh, buttonhole, and as you can see, you have all different styles and sizes of um, patterns, and uh, your uh, user manual will tell you how to uh, change the plates here, so that uh, for uh, button making, uh, let's see, we've got a little selection of uh, sewing feet in there. Got your uh, uh, quilt marker. Got uh, a quilting guide. Got two screwdrivers, different sizes, and uh, a little awl for making holes. That's your needle threader. You have two needle threaders? Huh, you do. How about that? I think they're the same. Actually, they look a little different. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the difference is. So, I'm just going to leave both of them in here and one of them works better for you than the other, then good luck. Oh, hey, and even instructions are there. So, needle threader, new in the box. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, I'm going to put your zigzag cam back in for um, remember, open this all the way to uh, extract your cam. Uh, you may have to turn the uh, hand wheel a little bit to uh, if the uh, stitch follower happens to be over one of the bumps to remove it. Um, we have, uh, let's see, 10 different stitch pattern cams, counting the one that's going to be inside here. And uh, I'll get her packed up and ready to go, and uh, you'll see her soon. Thanks for watching, and if you've come here from somewhere else on the internet, uh, we are Stagecoach Road, a vintage sewing machine, and we are on Stagecoach Road out in the coast range of Oregon, so uh, we are stagecoachroadsewing.com. Uh, if you come out to the website, you're going to see hundreds and hundreds, literally hundreds of um, machines that we've restored over the years. Uh, pictures from all different angles, and it's pretty cool. It's like our online museum. And at the top of the page, there's going to be several, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 machines that are uh, still available for you to bring home to your sewing room. So check them out. And um, Thanks for watching. Stagecoachroadsewing.com. We'll see you there.